Yes, there's Rocksteady at King of the Pit TV signing in live and we are large people. The Undertones had a little recommendation for this one and I thought, you know what, that's a good recommendation. I've heard Teenage Kicks and that's it, that's it. I don't know anything else from this band. I got a cheeky little Wikipedia page open, so let's have a little deep before we jump in. And as always, people, if you want to enjoy the full album reactions without wasting your time and your life waiting for everything to come onto YouTube bit by bit, link is down in the description, all right? Let's do this. So let's have a little deek, eh? The Undertones are a rock band formed in Derry, Northern Ireland in 74. So already I didn't even know that. I thought they were proper um, English band. Irish band, very interesting, from 75 to 83, so, you know, relatively speaking, not a not a long uh, existence initially for this band. The Undertones consisted of Fergal Sharkey, John O'Neill, Damien O'Neill, Michael Bradley, and Billy Doherty. Doherty? How do you pronounce that? Much of the earlier uh, Undertones material drew influence from punk rock and new wave, okay? <laughs> Despite the backdrop of the troubles in Derry and across Northern Ireland, the mass, vast majority, though not all of the material the undertones released, focused not upon the political climate, but upon issues such as adolescence, teenage angst and heartbreak. In 1999, they reformed and replaced the lead singer, which is interesting. I don't know how that ended out. <laughs> Undertones remain the most successful band to have emerged from Derry. One of the most successful bands to emerge from Northern Ireland. All right. I mean, I'll be honest with you. That's a little bit of a low ceiling. Undertones, right? Yeah, I'm aware of the Undertones, but do you know me? I'm going to tell you the truth. I know the Undertones as a one-hit wonders band. I'd, I'd, as, as much as they probably have influenced, because they were in the game so early, mid-70s, like, that's really early start for this act. So, no doubt they've had such an incredible wealth of, um, you know, knock-on to punk rock music. But I don't hear many people citing the undertones as, like, their influence. So, it's obviously an indirect thing, but I digress. I'm making judgments before I'm listening to the music, which, you know, I mean, you don't, you're not here for that. This one's Family Entertainment, track number one. Let's go. I think I like this. I think I like this. Seen the Doc Martins on the um, on the cover photo. Bro, they must have been in fashion at the time. They've all got the the high docks on and the um, the smart curled up jeans. What'd you call that? Boot cut jeans. Advertised by Expedia people, sponsored by Expedia, don't gas me up. I like the lead guitar tone. I like how it's a little bit hot. It doesn't sound great, but... It sounds good in the context of the overall soundscape of the record. I like that. The fellas sort of hushed vocals on this uh, tune. I I'm not too fussed about. I don't mind the um, backing vocals when they come in on the call.
punchy little snare drum. Of course, we're jamming out on the toms right about now. Very punk rock on them drums right now. These are remasters, by the way. Some cool lead guitars going on. The lead guitars in the chorus section add to the sound, but they're not bold enough or pumped up in the mix enough for them to completely consume everything, which is what some lead guitars do. Speaking from personal experience, I like to play a noodle a bit of lead guitar. Sometimes it's so easy to just go overboard and just naff up the entire chorus section. <laughs> It was alright, it wasn't a great start to the record as far as selling me it. Just listening to that one tune, I think 16 uh, songs might be a bit of a slog potentially, but we're going to continue going on. Girls Don't Like It is coming up next, track 2 of 16, alright? <laughs> 